Hello and welcome to the AYTM.com Quadrant Analysis Tutorial video. This video will show you how to launch a battery of similar questions faster and explore insights in an interactive quadrant view. You will learn the basics of the methodology, how to set up and launch the questions, and how to interpret the data. If you're looking for AYTM's signature interactive 3D visualizations, please refer instead to our competitive topography tutorial video. The purpose of our automated quadrant analysis is to explore a number of entities, such as brands, competing in the same market. Exploration is done by asking respondents to rate each brand by a number of attributes. For example, to get an idea of the fast food industry in the U.S., you may want to rate McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, and so forth on things like food quality, prices, healthiness, and speed of service. This methodology will give you comparative insights into each brand's scores broken out by attribute. You can use the method for any other types of research where several entities are rated on the same attributes. The main advantage of this advanced question type is low cost and time efficiency on both ends, survey programming and data analysis. To pull a quadrant view out of the raw data, researchers used to spend a lot of time creating and recreating the charts in Excel and other apps, while our version is a snap. If you're looking for a more advanced perceptual mapping or multidimensional scale research test, I definitely recommend our competitive topography test. One of my favorite things about this question type is that it's incredibly easy to set up. It can be added like any other question, from the sidebar or at the bottom of the survey. You can also convert an existing question into a quadrant analysis question. All you have to do now is to fill out the list of entities and attributes you want to test. The question requires at least two items in each list, and you can add up to 10. Add more by clicking here, or remove extras by Xing them out. In the right bottom corner of the attributes list, you will find a combo box with AYTN attributes divided into three groups, product attributes, service attributes, and general brand attributes. As with most other question types, you have an ability to illustrate every field, add restaurant logos as in my example, and randomize the order in which they will be presented, or even selectively anchor some of them. Now it's time to decide whether you want respondents to rate each brand with stars, which is the default mode, or sliders. If you choose star ratings, you'll be able to use 5, 7, or 9 stars for each attribute. Choosing sliders will give you more flexibility. You'll be able to choose from our library of pre-written Likert scales, edit the answers, or write your own custom ones, and even adjust the scores from 1 to 99, which are assigned when an answer is chosen. By default, we add 10 points for one star, or the lowest answer on the Likert scale, and go all the way up to 50, 70, or 90 for the top rating. If you decide to edit the Likert scale or adjust the scores, make sure you know exactly what you're doing, as it will affect data visualization. The last important decision here is to choose how to group these two lists. By default, we'll group them by entities, in this case, brands. That means that each brand will be presented as a separate question with attributes listed as sub-questions below. This grouping may be easier for respondents, since it helps them to activate memories of all their experiences with a given brand or entity and rate it by all the attributes you include. If you switch to group by attribute, each question will be asked about one attribute at a time, such as food healthiness, and will contain all compared brands on the page. It might introduce a higher cognitive toll on respondents, since they'll have to access a lot more memories in order to answer each of the questions. But in some cases, it might be more valuable, since it'll help focus attention on comparing all brands by a given attribute. Please note that the test will take as many questions as there are items in the list you're grouping by. In my example, we see eight. Now it's time to make sure the question is still appropriate for your case. We have four pre-written question texts designed for star ratings and sliders in both modes, grouped by entities and by attributes. You will note that our platform will suggest default text as you adjust the parameters of the experiment, as long as the field is empty or untouched. If you edited the field already, we won't mess with your text, but you'll have to understand how it works and carefully test it out. You may notice the internal piping here. If you group by entities, the word entity will be replaced by a brand as you roll over it, helping you preview how each of the questions will read in the survey. The same will happen with attributes. If you accidentally remove the magic word in square brackets, don't panic. You can type it back in, or click on the warning that will appear underneath. Click on the text of the warning to insert the code at the end of your question. Make sure you move it to the appropriate part of the sentence. Click on the question icon to read a quick blurb about how this works. You can combine the quadrant analysis test with any other questions. 
Test your entire survey carefully and launch when it's ready, just as you would launch any other survey on our platform. Let's now look at the results. Results of the quadrant analysis test are very easy to understand. It allows you to assign any of the attributes to each of the axes, and the entities will be positioned accordingly on the grid. In addition, you can use size and color to visualize two more attributes. For example, if I set convenience location as the x-axis, food healthiness as the y-axis, food quality taste as size, and menu options variety as color, I'll get this picture. It helps me to quickly identify the brand leaders by all four attributes. It wouldn't be fun if we hadn't added a little extra to this question type on top of what you'd normally expect from a quadrant analysis. When you click on a circle, you can see the actual distribution of answer combinations by the current X and Y attributes. Why does this matter? Since the position of the brands is a mean of all collected ratings, sometimes it's totally unclear what distribution of answers resulted in such a mean. For example, respondents could have been very polarized in their rating, or very consistently gave an average rating. In both cases, the mean score and location of the brand would be very similar, and you wouldn't know what actually happened to create the results. Here I have McDonald's open. You can discover the exact number of people who gave a corresponding combination of ratings when you hover over the gray dots on the grid. The units on the axes are represented in the score, but it's easy enough to remember that we gave 10 points for each star. The circle in the left bottom corner, for example, represents one star for convenience and one star for food healthiness. 36 people gave this combination of ratings. The largest gray circle seems to be in the center of the top row. It was the most popular combination, 178 people gave the chain 7 stars for convenience and 4 for healthiness. Another useful thing about Quadrant View is that you can see mean ratings for up to 4 selected attributes at the same time in the grid below. Click on the headers to sort in descending or ascending order by any of the attribute values. Probably the most amazing thing about all AYTM advanced questions and research tests, including Quadrant Analysis, besides the great interactive visualizations and ease of use, is that they're fully integrated into the stats page. That means you can apply any combination of filters by demographics and traits and have the numbers re-crunched in almost real time for you. You can see, for example, how ratings by attributes of the fast food restaurants varied from gender to gender, from one age group to another, or select only a subset of respondents loyal to Chick-fil-A and see their ratings on the quick service restaurant industry. That concludes this tutorial video. I encourage you to play with the demo survey, available on our site, and check out the research test description in the question type section. Thanks again for watching, and feel free to ping us with questions or to set up a personal demo.